Hey, what's up guys? How you guys doing? This is Ray. And in this video, I want to talk about the eye lock. I know I've spoken about it before. I made a video about it in the past. But since the trial version of Pro Tools 10 came out, a lot of people have been asking me questions about the eye lock. Why do I need it? That's one of the most questions that are constantly being asked. Or do I physically need the eye lock? Or can I just register Pro Tools with the website alone and no eye lock. I mean, there are some guys out there that are just starting out and really don't know how things work. And that's why I make videos to help you guys out. So let's start off with the eye lock. You go over to the Avid website, you fill out the information, and then there's a part there that's gonna ask you for your eye lock ID. If you don't have one, you're gonna go over to the eye lock website, fill out all the information, create an account, but make sure you have one of these. To create an account, you don't need an eye lock. But if you wanna use Pro Tools or any plugins that require the eye lock, I need one of these. Now, as you can see, I have two of them here. This is the first generation eye lock. And as you can see, I kind of butchered the thing. This is the second generation eye lock. All right, so now that you have your eye lock, you created your account. Now you're gonna go back to that Avid website and you're gonna fill in all that information. And now when you get to that part that it asks you for your eye lock account, you put your uh, eye lock account ID there. And once that's all done, Avid is gonna deposit a license into your account. So you gotta go back to the iLock account automatically on the top of the site. It should tell you that you have available license for download. So you're gonna click that and then you're gonna select the iLock. So once you do that and you hit download, it's gonna put that license inside of here. Then you can launch Pro Tools. So in other words, guys, you do need to have a physical iLock. Enough about the iLocks and let's talk about some of the other systems that are out there. I know some of you guys are interested in this too. Now let's talk about a company like uh, Persona. They have a DAW called Studio One. I have Studio One. They don't use a Nylock. They have a totally different system. And here's how it works. When you activate it, you have two options. To activate online or to do an offline activation. Now, when you do the offline activation, they give you this uh, hardware key. It's like a hardware fine print. Basically, it's a set of numbers. Once they get those numbers, they generate a license file for you. That number basically is a combination of your motherboard, hard drive, CPU. That's how that number is generated. So if you change any major component on your computer, that number might change and it requires a whole new license file. Now here's where it sucks. Some of these companies only give you a certain amount of activation. I don't remember exactly how many activations us you get with Studio One, but let's just say it's five. So if you finish all the five, every time you want to reactivate Studio One, you have to email these people. They'll definitely help you out after how many uh, emails. Eventually, they're going to think you're installing the software everywhere. If you're like me, I'm constantly upgrading something on my computer. I want to change the CPU or I want to change the hard drive. And see, those are major components. So that hardware ID or the fine print ID will change. There's been times when I formatted my computer, installed everything, and I could use the same a uh, license file. Reason, I haven't changed anything. Same hard drive, everything's in the same order. It just works. But anyway guys, you see that subscribe button? Click that, rate this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, post on the bottom. You could also check me out on Twitter and Google Plus. 